Uh, well, then we have our adult fears, making money, getting a career, getting a job, moving forward, buying a house, buying a car, paying bills, you know, getting married, having kids, you know, all those things, pressures, worries, fears, fret, fret, fret. And then, of course, we there's a whole other group of fears, old age fears. They're different from teenage fears, uh, different from adult fears, but they're fears nevertheless of health, insecurity, uh, yeah, finances, uh, death, you know, a whole new set of fears. It seems like the whole life long we've got reasons to fret along. We've got our own package of uh, fears and frets. And uh, then, hey, add to that the news, you know, the news. What's going on in the world? And, oh, my, we're really happy now. Uh, because uh, most news, of course, is is bad news. Uh, current events, keeping up on them, which we like to do. We like to be, you know, up to speed on things. Uh, I always have. I think you probably have too. And yet, uh, there's a downside to that. Uh, bad news sells better than good news. We know that. We want to know about the earthquake. We want to know about the fire. We want to know about the murder, the break-in, the plane crash, you know, uh, the imprisonment of some politician, whatever it is. We, we want to know about that. And so we, um, we focus in on that. And uh, that's, it's a, rather a negative thing. You can become overly concerned about the criminal acts of others, about which you could do what? Virtually nothing, right? It's not in your control. We have no control over those things. We've got no control over what uh, Putin's doing in Syria right now. Do you? Uh, do we like it? No, we don't like it at all. Do we like what's happening over there? Of course not. What can you do about it? Well, the, these things happening in the, the world. What can you do? Well, there's not much you can do. And yet if we live on a diet of those things... Uh, we'll um, we'll do a lot of fretting. And does God say, well, that's why I made you. I made you to fret. I made you to worry. You'd be all twisted up, torn up, and, and worried and scowl-faced all the time, right? No, that doesn't seem to be his approach at all. In fact, Psalm 37, a beautiful psalm, we're going to read it, uh, here tells us quite quite the opposite of not being uh, worry warts, but rather to be worry-free or fret-free, as I've titled this, fret-free about the reality around us. Easier said than done, I understand, uh, because we, we do have a sense of justice in our heart, and we just can't stand the idea of, of lying scumbag crooks getting away with stuff. And, and even being rewarded for it and praised and lauded for it. It just gets your goat, you know. And if you're not careful, you could really really get angry, really get mad over those things. And uh, here we're getting some good counsel in Psalm 37 uh, not to do that. It's probably a psalm of, of David. It's, it's uh, attributed to him. We're just going to read a couple of the verses in the psalm of uh, David. And I'm going to read it here in two translations. One, the common one you probably have in your uh, Bible before you, uh, and also one by uh, a gentleman who's written um, an extensive three-volume set just on the psalms, John Golden Gay, who does a fine job of translating uh, Psalm 37. But let's, let's read it together. Turn there if you got your... Hand your Bible, grab it. Psalm 37. It reads very much like Psalm 1. It's almost like a build upon of Psalm 1. And and if you can remember what that was about, uh, it's certainly one of the most beautiful Psalms in, in all of Scripture. And uh, by the way, you think the Psalms are maybe ir irrelevant? Well, we'll talk about that maybe in our second session here. But the fact the most quoted passage of the Old Testament in the entire New Testament. I mean, the most quoted of all passages in the Old Testament 
quoted in the New Testament, the most frequently cited passage in the New Testament is from where? Do you know? You want to take a guess? Well, Psalm 110. Nevertheless, very relevant. Psalm 37, let me read it here in the Common Translation. Do not fret because of those who do evil. Well, we do, tend to. So why would he say this? Well, he'd say it because it's a problem. It's probably something David himself experience fretting uh, he fretted over evil I mean they're conspiring all the time and they seem to be getting away with a lot of stuff getting followers uh, and uh, he realized he could just ruin his mind he could become paranoid if he kept on fretting about what evil doers were doing because th then what are you well you're looking through a glass into the world of evil doers and you're just seeing evil doing. And uh, what's that? Well, it's a little bit like sticking your nose in a septic tank. You know, it's it's not a pleasant thing. So David says, don't fret because of those who are evil. Well, okay, well, that's that's a challenge right there, isn't it? Or be envious of those who do wrong. Why would you be envious? Well, they got away with it. In some cases, they even prospered in getting away with it. So you're kind of envious, thinking, well, uh, maybe, you know, if, if I attempted to do some wrong things, it'll be profitable for me too. And um, the counsel here is to remain fast. Uh, don't do that. Uh, and why? Well, you got to see the end, get the big picture. For like the grass, they will soon wither, like green plants, they will soon die away. And we see that out in our yard all over. The leaves are coming down. The green plants are withering. Going, fallen over. Some of them have to be dug out and thrown away. Uh, because that's just what happens. Uh, they're temporary. So the point is what you're seeing about this temporary prosperity of the wicked, for instance, uh, isn't going to last long. So you don't want to get on some bandwagon that's going nowhere other than to destruction. Uh, verse 3. Trust in Yahweh and do good. Now that's a counterpoint, isn't it? Rather than fret about evil and be envious of those who get away with it, uh, trust in, in God. In what respect? Well, virtually in, in all respects how you should live your life now and what the future is going to be because of how you live your life now. Uh, and do good. So that's pretty positive, isn't it? It value your, li your life in doing good rather than keeping track of evil. Now, we don't want to be, you know, um, panacea-like. Uh, we don't want to be uh, Pollyannish thinking, well, you know, everything's just, just, just fine, just think good. Uh, no, there's evil out there, so we, we want to kind of be aware of it. Uh, the New Testament writer said, don't be ignorant of the devil and his cunning. So, in other words, if you're going out where there are going to be wild lions and things about, you have to know a little bit about how they operate in order to protect yourself and what their habits are. Um, so, yeah, we're we're aware of it, but we don't want to become experts in that. We don't want to have that our whole focus in life. Now, I know some Christians who mean well. Uh, they, they seem to just thrive on keeping track of where evil is and what the devil's doing or mark of the beast might be him, might be her, whatever. And, and they just sort of fill their lives with that as if somehow they're going to squeeze some, some great happiness or uh, joy juice out of evil. Well, you're not. Uh, you're just going to get angry. And you're going to become bitter. And so where's the love of God going to shine through you? Where's the smile of the face of God going to re be reflected from you? Well, it's not if that's your thing. So it says here, trust in the Lord and do good. 
dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. You're here, you're living, this is your world, this is your land, wherever it might be. And if you have safe pasture now, which may be a lot, probably most do, enjoy it. Enjoy the safe pasture. Uh, watch the sun rise. See the grass grow. See the clouds float by. Enjoy uh, the peace and the family and the children and the grandchildren and the good things uh, that are out there that are part of God's marvelous creation. I was just watching a couple of my birds here this morning. I've got uh, some of these um, woodpeckers out here, the big guys, and uh, I hang up the suet, you know, on the back porch and hangs on down. The crows can't get to it because they're not nimble enough to hang on to this little cage that swings around with the suit inside of it. But those uh, woodpeckers have no problem. And when they come, they can eat upside down, sideways, whatever way. Long bill, just punch, punch, punch. Uh, and they just uh, eat and swallow and eat and swallow. And a beautiful look at, you know, red spotted chests and and uh, just marvelous looking creatures. And as soon as they just bolt off and fly away and leave everything swinging, you know, they're pretty aggressive characters. Well, then all little birdies come and they get their chance to, you know, eat the suet. Uh, all beef suet, by the way. Uh, and uh, it's just fun to watch them. I said, well, these, these are God's creatures. This is going on now in his world. These are beautiful things to see, to enjoy this nice pasture of God's world. Uh, we need to uh, do more of that. We all do. Uh, enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, or Yahweh, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So, say, well, what are the desires of your heart? Is it a big new Cadillac? Is that the big thing in your life, in your heart? Well, when you really get down to it, what are the deepest desires of your heart? If it's not, you know, for meaning in your life, uh, if it's not to fulfill this this transcendent understanding of who am I and who is God and what's in the future and how then shall I live? I mean, these are the things we really want to know. And in the great commandment, which Christ talked about uh, from Deuteronomy 6, 4, of loving the Lord your God with all your heart and your being, your strength, your soul. If that's where your heart is, uh, he's going to give you that. Uh, trust him. Take delight uh, in God. Now, you don't take delight in the, in the evil. They, you know, they make you mad. But you can take delight in God. See the the opposite? Well, this has something to do with, do with one's uh, attitude. Will your outlook brighten? If you do that, ask yourself. He can give you peace in the midst of an upset world, uh, evil here and there. Commit your way to the Lord and trust Him. And He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Whatever you've lost or whatever else, your vindication, like with Jesus, what was His vindication? Well, being raised from the dead, raised from this earth to the presence of His Holy Father in heaven, and glorified with amazing uh, brightness and glory and honor and power and, and eternal life. Uh, that's, that's going to be your vindication as well. And he talks about a righteous reward. Why? Well, it's because you've been doing good. You've been following God. And then verse 7. Be still before Yahweh and wait patiently for him. Now this is uh, this is a uh, not so easy, is it? Uh, my little grandson Nathan, I'm always teasing him. I said, "Patience." Do you know what the word patience means? Because he wants everything now. That's kind of his um, his mental thing, you know. If it's going to go somewhere, he doesn't have the quite the sense of time lapse. He's getting better on that, but. Uh, 
he he sort of lacks that a little bit. So everything's right now. And if he's told, let's say, for instance, that he's coming over to see Grandma and Grandpa, why well, you know, like now he wants to do it now rather than what they said his parents said, you know, two days from now or so. Um, and then, of course, when he gets here, uh, he whatever you mention, he whatever it is, you say, well, he, he wants it now. And so we say, Nathan, do you ever heard of patience? Of course, he hears this a lot, so he smiles. He says, yeah, 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 I know, I know patience. Uh, we tend to be impatient, don't we, uh, humanly. We like things uh, right now, immediate, uh, whether it be immediate gratification or if we're in trouble, immediate deliverance, immediate answers to our perplexing, uh, non-plussing problems. Uh, but it says, be patient. Wait for him to do what? Well, to bring about his righteous reward, uh, to lead you down the right path uh, to eternal life, to bless you, to give you peace. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. So now the tendency is to fret. I understand that. So we, we we don't say, well, bless them for their evil, or uh, isn't that wonderful that they're able to lie and scheme and kill people and get away with it and be honored? No, of course not. Do you hate it? Uh, but God doesn't want you to be lessened, torn apart, or your joy to evaporate out of your life because of the evil someone else is doing. They're going to be accountable for their sins. Uh, we're accountable for our lives. So he says, don't, don't do that. In verse 8, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Now, do you sometimes get angry? I confess I do. Uh, angry about the world situation, about the news, about crooked politicians and, and crooked media and, you know, all these things. You can work up a case, can't you? Um, but... This is good counsel, I think, don't you? In Psalm 37, refrain from that anger. Turn from wrath. Don't grind your teeth. What, what good does it do? All it does is upset you. He goes on, do not fret. It only leads to evil. So if you get caught up in this anger, bitterness, and fretting and everything else, you're going to find yourself walking down the wrong path good counsel for those who are evil will be destroyed but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land uh, and of course that has greater meaning than just territory right now but it of course is the whole earth is going to be uh, our inheritance so when you choose uh, there's a contrast here there's, there's just a better way of thinking about the negative news in our world, and that's what the psalm is saying. Uh, it's reality, sure, we don't deny reality, but how do we think about it is what's important. And uh, worrying about events beyond our control, as Jesus said, sufficient unto the day is the evil lived. There are, don't worry about tomorrow and all the rest. You know, God's going to take care of that. In fact, later on, the psalm talks about Yahweh laughing. What's he laughing about? Well, he's laughing about what's going to happen to the wicked and all their ways and all their schemes and everything else that's going to come to a, a crashing halt. And so he knows the end. It's like you're watching some slapstick comedy and you know how it's going to end. He's going to take a pratfall and the thing's going to cave in. And so God just sort of laughs at the stupidity of the wicked. Maybe we ought to stand back and realize a little of that ourselves because we're seeing how it's going to end and taking more of a peaceful approach and, and God wants us to have uh, peace peace is pretty pretty important isn't it so trust in God take delight in God and don't fret without limits most, most everything you can't do anything about anyway and uh, isn't this a good tonic for, for life do good. 
uh, live life in a positive way. Be still. Listen to God. Wait patiently uh, for Him. And uh, your outlook's going to uh, brighten. And uh, God will give us uh, peace in the in the midst of that. And say, well, that's that's a beautiful psalm. Why don't they talk about that in the New Testament? Well, it does. It surely does. And Philippians 4 and verse 6, Paul basically uh, recasts this entire psalm when he tells uh, Christians, he, he says to them, uh, do not be anxious about anything. This is uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Do not be anxious or fretting about anything but in every situation by prayer petition and thanksgiving present your requests to God in other words you turn to God seek him and the peace of God peace oh that's what we we really crave don't we peace tranquility enjoyment fret freeness and the peace of God which transcends all understanding. In other words, it's it's not something you can put on an equation. You think, well, you can't be peaceful with everything going on. you got to be mad and angry all the time. No, you don't. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds, your intellect, your emotions, in Christ Jesus. That's just not a tagline in Christ Jesus. People read that right on by. They don't know why they're saying it too often. It means like Jesus did, following his example. Uh, that's what we're to, to line up behind him uh, with these attitudes, which, of course, the same one David was telling us uh, about. And Jesus was surrounded by evildoers the whole time. What was his message? Right from the get-go, the kingdom of God, the good news. That's what gospel means, the kingdom of God. So it was a, a message of delight. And he was with his friends, and he enjoyed sharing that message. And we should enjoy receiving it as, as well. So fret not. Read Psalm uh, 37. I was going to read it from Golden Gaze. Uh, thing here but I think I've run out of uh, time for that so uh, maybe another time